give it to work with. I'm often told that not enough attention is given to the hen bird in these painting seminars, lessons, and what's available to you. I want to spend a few minutes here talking about the, this hen bird and how the airbrush was used and how some of these effects were created. One of the things that I'd like for you to notice is, and you'll notice this in most references, is that the back of the bird is generally darker than the side pocket. It's pretty common. There are a couple of things that I notice relative to that. One, these feathers on the side have wide, broad bands of, of light color for edges, where the ones on the back are thin and crisp. There are more internal markings on these feathers. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't more dark. Uh, the, the dark values in the back feathers aren't darker than they are in, in the uh, side feathers. But these things are cumulative. Both the smaller edges, the darker darks, compared to the wider edges and the lighter values in, in the sides. Um, another thing you might notice where the airbrush was used is to shade around the eye. And uh, when, it, when it come forward up here to the bill, you find that I did some shading with it. Now what you'd want to watch out, this, this bill has some modeling in it. You don't want all of these modeled little dark dots on here to be airbrushed in. Some of them are quite hard in appearance if you look at your reference material. And you can leave some soft ones, some of the effects from the airbrush, but you need to take your sable brush and go along in here and dot in some of those edges, make at least some edges hard, crisp, and no noticeable uh, for their contrast to the, to the other soft things. Some of the things that we demonstrated earlier was the use of shadowing and highlight to solidify the round carving that we've done here. And you'll notice here that I highlighted from, from light to dark, light to dark, and down the line as, as that works, finally ending up shadowing further and further as, as I go lower. Uh, on the primaries, in this particular case, and this can be done in different ways, I highlighted the edge of each of these primaries that made a transition from a darker center to lighter. And then when the, the fine edge was, was put on with the uh, sable brush, it was not too great a contrast from the dark to the light. Everything worked out, uh, blended well together. Let's review a few of the things that we've touched on as we went through this airbrush lesson. Uh, we started out early on and painted this dot pattern in the breast. This bird is a bird I did a year or so ago. It uh, doesn't have a detailed texture in it, but I painted a lot of texture into it using highlight and shadow to create a, a textured effect. In most instances, I was able to split through create a translucent effect and diminish the effects of the airbrush itself, take advantage of what's good about it and uh, wipe out what's not so very good about it. Another area where I used it was to shadow or shade the forehead so that the forehead blended from this dark into the lighter area here. And the way I tied that together is I put some dark feather bases in with a sable brush and went right on through into the lighter area and transitioned what was an airbrush finish into feathers. Some of you might notice if you look at black and white photographs, uh, they'll oftentimes show up the highlight and shadow in a, in a subject that you're looking at much better than a colored photograph will. You'll see that right along here is a very bright spot in yeah, black and white photograph after black and white photograph. So I managed, I took my airbrush, put a little bit of yellow into my iridescent paint, 
and highlighted that area right there. You can see also that I darkened the shadowed areas, these little dips that I had carved into here, and powered up the, the face a little bit. When we, when we worked our way through the tertials and the scapulars, we went forward and darkened some edges up, up in the uh, cape area. The effect of all, all of that is carried, carried over, although this is vermiculated over top, the, the effects of all this work are, are translated into that finished product. We've used Godden castings and Googie castings to demonstrate the various techniques that we've shown here. One of the things that I like to do is to have my students paint a casting before they carve the bird. These castings are a wonderful study in anatomy and feather structure. The Badger airbrush is simple, it atomizes the paint perfectly, and it fits your budget. You use the airbrush intelligently, and it'll make a great contribution to your painting. Keep it clean, and it'll serve you well. This is George Cruz. Backwash, backwash, backwash.